Hello everyone, my name is Elijah David, minister of the 12th Hour Apostolic Sabbatarian Congregation on the 12th Hour in Liberty Hill, Texas. Today is August 10, 2013, or it is evening 4, 2017. We will start our second service on this Saturday, Sabbath of the song entitled, uh, Are You Washing the Blood? Have you been to Yashua for the cleansing power? Are you washed in the blood of the blood? Are you fully trusting in His grace this hour? Are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? Are you washed in the blood in the soul? inhabitants of the heaven seem for a time to be crowned with their success. A vast number of the angels were seduced, but the Satan's apparent triumph resulted in the defeat and loss, separation from the Elohim, and banished from the heaven. When the conflict was renewed upon the earth, Satan again won a seeming advantage. By the transgression, man became his captive, and man's kingdom also was betrayed into the hands of the ark uh, rebel. Now the way seemed open for the Satan to establish an independent kingdom and for the defying of the authority of the Elohim and his son. But the plan of salvation through the uh, teaching of the blood of the everlasting covenant in the Yahshua made it possible for um, the man, again, to be brought into the harmony with the Yahweh Elohim the Father and for the rendering of the obedience unto His law once again, and that's uh, first and foremost is the Ten Commandment law uh, that the Heavenly Father insists upon that it has to be justified 
And the only way it can be justified for the sinner is that he has to come through uh, the blood process. He has to go and through the blood process of the sanctuary, and that's the commandments of his son, Yahshua, which is the commandments of the sanctuary. And that's what he taught uh, the children of Israel uh, through the sanctuary system raised up by the Moses in the tabernacle. So it says right here, and to render obedience unto his law, and for both man and the earth to be finally redeemed from the power of the wicked one. Okay, again, Satan was defeated, and again he resorted unto the deception and the hope of the converting uh, his defeat into a victory. Uh, the stirring up the re rebellion and the fallen race, he now represented Elohim as unjust and having permitted man to transgress his law. Why? It said the artful tempter. When Elohim knew what would be the result, did he permit man to be placed on the trial to sin and bring in the misery and death and the children of the Adam, forgetful of the long suffering. Uh, mercy that had granted man another trial regardless of the amazing, the awful sacrifice which his rebellion had cost the king of the heaven, gave ear unto the tempter and murmured against the only being who could save them from the destructive power of the Satan. That is Yahshua's blood. That's the only thing that can save you. If you're not covered by it, then you're... Uh, need to learn then how to obtain this uh, blood, how to assimilate it and appropriate it uh, unto yourself in the spiritual way that it is taught there, in the, especially in the New Testament. Uh, it is taught that uh, in, in Romans 8, chapter 1 and 2, it says, the law of the spirit of the life of the Yahshua hath made thee free from law of sin. It's through the law, uh, the law of the Spirit now that we serve Yahshua, and that's how we become sanctified. And the only way you can uh, serve the law of the Spirit in Yahshua is you have to accept Him and uh, the position He holds as your high priest and mediator for sin, your behalf. Okay, now it says, There are thousands today echoing the same rebellious complaint against the other now. They do not see that. Or to deprive man of the freedom of the choice would be to rob him of his prerogative as an intelligent being and make him a mere automation. It is not Elohim's purpose to coerce the will. Man was created a free moral agent. Like the inhabitants of all other worlds, he must be subjected unto the test of the obedient, but he is never brought into such a position that yielding unto the evil becomes a matter of the necessity. No temptation or trial is permitted to come unto him, which he is unable to resist. Elohim made such ample provision that man need never have been defeated in the conflict with their Satan. As men increased upon the earth, almost the whole world joined the ranks of the rebellion. Once more, Satan seemed to have gained the victory, but omnipotent power again cut short the working of the iniquity and the earth was cleansed by the flood from its moral pollution. Okay, uh, why are we reading about this at this time? Because Yahweh is calling for another cleansing of this earth from its moral pollution. And this time he's going to cleanse it by the fire. Now it says, as it was in the days of Noah, so shall it be in the days of the Son of Man. We have time when we get through reading this uh, uh, chapter. We're going to look into uh, more of the aspect of as it was in the days of Noah, so shall it be also in the day when the Son of Man is revealed. And he comes back in his last day. He says, never again is he going to destroy the earth by the water, but he's going to destroy it this time by the fire. And he's going to do it here in this 12 parabolic hours you see right here. While, it's, while the daylight is still shining, while we're still in the probationary time. Says the prophet, let us continue. Uh, when thy judgments are in the earth, or at the earth and prophecy is the United States proper, when thy judgments are in the earth, and they are certainly in the earth today, 
because uh, we have uh, the beast, we have the beast, and we have his false prophet that is dictating uh, verbally, uh, not dictating to him, but also just telling the world, telling the inhabitants of the earth and the world exactly uh, where his uh, where his headquarters are at, and uh, he's also unfolding his plans for the whole world through this mouthpiece, this false prophet. And you know who the false prophet is? He's this black savior of the world that has come on the scene uh, today, and uh, he is. Uh, able to do anything he wants to do in the sight of man. Uh, he has taken over the number one seat and uh, of authority, and he sits it up on the seat now of the world as the president not only of the United States but of the whole world. So it says, says the prophet, when thy judgments are in the earth, earth and prophecy is the United States prophet, the inhabitants of the world, and that's the whole wide world, outside of the earth. That includes and takes in the whole aspect of the four winds, of, uh, the four points of the compass on, on, on our globe. That's what it's talking about. It says that when my judgment, my judgment, when Yahweh's, when Yahshua's judgments are in the earth, the inhabitants of the world will learn righteousness. Let favor be showed unto the wicked. Yet will he not learn righteousness and will not behold the majesty of the Yahshua. Isaiah 26, 9 and 10. Thus it was after the flood released from his judgments, the inhabitants of the earth again rebelled against his, the, uh, the Yahshua and, and Yahweh his father. Twice Elohim's covenant and his statutes had been rejected by the world. Well, they, whenever the world rejected Yahweh's covenant and his statutes, it means that they rejected the father and the son and they rejected the sanctuary system that uh, the Father and the Son sit up at the Garden of Eden after Adam and Eve fell. This is what delivered Adam and Eve from sure death that very day that they sinned. This gave them a probationary time to uh, regain themselves and to re reflect again upon the horribleness of what they've done in their first disobedience about believing that serpent's life. Both the people before the flood and the descendants of the north cast off the divine authority. Then the Yahweh Elohim entered into a covenant with the Abraham. Now before uh, Yahweh ever uh, went any further in heaven, he created his son first. First he created heaven, the planet, in which to live on, as a prototype of this planet. And then he created his son. That's the first order of the creation law with his son. Okay, so now it says uh, that Yah Yahweh uh, looking down to the streams of time and uh, uh, he is, uh, has uh, for his great overall plan is to create human life in the universe. He knew that there'd be a possibility of them, uh, someone, somewhere on some planet falling into sin. And so he created his son out of his own loins, and they, he made a covenant with his son in heaven. That in case any future uh, beings that they were to create were to rebel and fall into sin, that his son then would be the mediator, would be the, the ultimate sacrifice through the blood to uh, redeem back those that uh, were to be redeemed and get back into good graces with uh, Yahweh the Father and Son and, and Heaven. So he made a cut with him. And so uh, then, then uh, he comes along and Adam and Eve fall, uh, falls into sin here on earth and he comes down to this earth and he made a cut with Adam and Eve. A covenant of blood and he set up the sanctuary system with them so that they could have a second chance to get back to the Garden of Eden. Okay, so he made the covenant with Abraham, I mean, uh, he made uh, with, uh, with uh, Adam and Eve. And then he made the covenant uh, with the, the next uh, predestined uh, person, uh, a prophet, and that was Enoch, the seventh generation from Adam. 
And uh, then he made, uh, he renewed that covenant with Noah after, after Ham. And then after uh, Noah, he renewed that covenant with Abraham. Okay, the first Hebrew that was uh, called out of Babylon or the Chaldees to make his way into a, a land that Yahweh has to show him. That was to be the land that would uh, then uh, be designated as the, as the land uh, of heaven that he designates for his chosen people, for he had chosen Abraham to come and represent uh, the chosen people of Israel out of, uh, okay, out of all the peoples and families of the earth, he chose uh, Israel. And they were to come to the seed of Abraham. So now he made a covenant with Abraham. He says he has remembered this covenant forever, starting with Adam, Enoch, Noah, now Abraham, and then under Isaac, Abraham's son, born of the Spirit, and to uh, Jacob, born from Isaac, and to Israel for an everlasting covenant. And you know, uh, Jacob is the one that got the name changed. That's the first time the name Israel was given to Yahweh's people. Was when Jacob overcome and repented and got the complete victory and got the complete blessing when he wrestled all night with that angel just before making his way back to his father's house in, in the land of Kenyan. But he was coming out of a foreign land, Mesopotamia, where he had to flee for 20 years. And uh, on his way back, he uh, wrestled with the angel all night. The angel gave him victory because he prevailed. And then he says, your name is no longer Jacob, meaning a uh, supplanter or a deceiver. But it's uh, Israel now, meaning that you have uh, attained unto perfect holiness and righteousness. And like my servant David, uh, have been forgiven of all your sins. Okay. So it says right here, both the people before the flood and the descendants of the north cast off the, the divine authority. Then the Yahweh Elohim entered into a covenant with the Abraham and took on himself a people to become the depositories of his law. Said to this and to seduce and destroy uh, this people, Satan began at once to lay his snares. For the children of Jacob were tempted to contract marriages with the heathen and to worship their idols. But that Joseph was faithful unto the Yahweh Elohim, and his fidelity was a constant testimony unto the true faith. It was to quench this life that Satan worked through the envy of Joseph's brothers to cause him to be sold as a slave in a heathen land. For the Yahweh Elohim overruled the events, however, so that the knowledge of him uh, self or should be given unto the people of the Egypt, both in the house of the Potiphar and in the prison. Joseph received an education and training that, with the fear of the Elohim, prepared him for his high position as the prime minister of the nation. From the palace of the Pharaohs, his influence was felt throughout the land, and the knowledge of the Elohim spread far and wide. For the Israelites in the Egypt also became prosperous and wealthy, and such as were true and the Elohim exerted a widespread influence. For the idolatrous priests were filled with the alarm as uh, they saw the new religion finding favor, inspired by the Satan with his own enmity toward the Elohim of the heaven. They set themselves for the quenching of the light until the priest was committed the education of the heir uh, unto the throne. And it was this spirit of the determined opposition unto the Yahweh Elohim and uh, zeal for the idolatry that molded the character of the future monarch and led to the cruelty and oppression toward the Hebrews. During the 40 years after the flight of the Moses from the Egypt, idolatry seemed to have conquered. A year by the year, the hopes of the Israelites grew fainter. Both king and people exulted in their power and mocked the Elohim of Israel. But this grew until it culminated in the Pharaoh who was confronted by the Moses when the Hebrew leader came 
uh, before the king with a message from the Yahweh, Elohim of the Israel, for it was not the ignorance of the true Elohim, but defiance of his power that prompted the answer, Who is this Yahweh Elohim that I should obey his voice? And uh, uh, how about his son, Yahshua, that actually was there, uh, uh, right there, his presence was with Moses at the time that he was down to confront this Pharaoh. This is actually Yahshua. Who is this Yahshua? Well, he's a son of the living Elohim. He was sent here on a mission to join uh, his uh, servant Moses, the visible servant. He's my invisible uh, helper here. He's my invisible uh, 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 king, and, and he's a ruler of this earth. That's the one that's, uh, that brought me here. I know, not the uh, Yahshua. All right. From the first and the last, Pharaoh's opposition unto the divine command was not the result of the ignorance, but of the hatred and defiance. Okay. It says, uh, through uh, the Egyptians, although the Egyptians had so long rejected the knowledge of the Yahweh Elohim, Yahweh still gave them opportunity for the repentance. In the days of the Joseph, Egypt had been in a solemn for the Israel. Elohim had been honored and the kindness shown his people. And now the long-suffering one, slow to anger and full of the compassion, gave each judgment time to do its work. For the Egyptians cursed through the very objects uh, they had worshipped had evidence of the power of the Yahweh and all who would might submit unto the Elohim and escape of his judgment. For the very bigotry and stubbornness of the king resulted in the spreading of the knowledge of the Elohim and bringing many of the Egyptians for the giving of themselves unto his service. For it was because uh, the Israelites were so disposed uh, for the connection of themselves with the heathen and imitate their idolatry that the Elohim had permitted them to go down into the Egypt where the influence of the Joseph was widely felt and where the circumstances were favorable for them to remain a distinct people who also uh, hear also the gross idolatry of the Egyptians and their cruelty and oppression during the latter part of the Hebrew sojourn should have inspired in them an abhorrence of the idolatry, and should have led them to flee for the refuge under the Elohim of their fathers. This very providence, Satan made a means to serve his purpose, darkening the minds of the Israelites and leading them to imitate the practices of their heathen masters on account of the superstitious veneration in which animals were held by the Egyptians. The Hebrews were not permitted during their bondage to present the sacrificial offerings. Uh, Thus, their minds were not directed by this service unto their great sacrifice and their faith uh, in the blood of the everlasting covenant uh, that Moses had uh, enjoined unto them later on there in Exodus 24, uh, 8, uh, was weak. Their faith is weak. And, and, the, and the plan of salvation system that Yahweh has set up in the Garden of Eden. When the time came for the Israel deliverance, Satan uh, set himself to resist the purposes of the Elohim. It was his determination that that great people, numbering more than two million souls, should be held in the ignorance and superstition. For the people whom the Elohim had promised to bless and multiply to make the power on the earth, and through whom he was revealed the knowledge of his will, the people whom he was to make the keepers of his law, this very uh, people, Satan was uh, seeking to keep in the obscurity and bondage that he might obliterate from their minds the remembrance of the Yahweh Elohim. When uh, the uh, miracles were wrought before the king, Satan was on the ground to counteract their influence and prevent Pharaoh from the acknowledging of the, of the supremacy of the Elohim and obeying uh, his uh, mandate. Satan wrought to the utmost of his power to counterfeit the work of the Elohim and resist his will. For the only result was to prepare the way uh, for a greater exhibition of the divine power and glory and to make more apparent both unto the Israelites and to all Egypt 
the existence and sovereignty of the true and living Elohim. For the Elohim delivered Israel with the mighty manifestation of his power and with the judgments upon all the gods of the Egypt. He brought forth his people with the joy and his chosen with the gladness that they might observe his statutes and keep his laws. Psalms 105, verse 43 to 45. For he rescued them from their servile state that he might bring them unto a good land, a land which in his providence had been prepared for them as a refuge from their enemies, where they might dwell under the shadow of his wing, he would bring them to himself and encircle them in his everlasting arms, and in return for all his goodness and mercy to them they were required to have no other gods before him, the living Elohim, and to exalt his name and make it glorious in the earth. How about the living Yahshua, the son that was very present there and uh, and all of uh, Moses' leadings of the children of Israel for a 40-year period. During the bondage in Egypt, many of the Israelites had, uh, to a great extent, lost uh, the knowledge of the Elohim's law and had mangled. Notice they said Elohim's law, singular, meaning Yahweh's law covers all laws of the universe. Ten Commandments, laws of the sanctuary that was added because of transgression. We read to you last night, Galatians 3.19. Uh, and had mingled its precepts with the heathen customs and traditions. For the Elohim brought them under the Sinai, and there with his own voice declared his law. Satan and evil agents were on the ground, even while the Elohim uh, was proclaiming his law, the Ten Commandments, unto his people. And then his law also, actually, when it says Elohim was proclaiming his law unto his people, it says that uh, in Nehemiah, it says that Nehemiah, when they brought the chil uh, children of Judah out of the 70-year captivity back to Jerusalem to restore and rebuild it and return back to their homeland, that uh, first they had to be uh, introduced again to the law of Yahweh. Uh, and that law of Yahweh was the law of his son, Yahshua, because it says, that law of Yahweh was written in a book by the hand of Moses. You'll find that in Deuteronomy 31. And it's called, it called it the Song of Moses and, and the Lamb. Okay, so it's the Song of Moses and the Lamb that was written in a book by Moses. And so, therefore then, uh, this your law of the Yahshua is also the law of the Ten Commandments. Because it says in Mark 2, 27 and 28 of the New Testament, it says that Yahshua is the Yahweh also of the seventh-day cycle. Because he's a co-creator with the Father on all creation of, of the, uh, this earth, all physical matter, all human life, all, every kind of life in the universe, Yahshua is a co-creator with the Father. So you want to know when the beginning was? The beginning was... Uh, when Yahweh created heaven first and then he created his son as the first creation of all living. And that started, we know, just prior to him coming down to this planet here uh, 6,000 years ago. So, I'm saying, we were saying, well, the universe is billions of years old. No, no, it don't necessarily have to be. If our faith will take us back to the beginning and, uh, as we understand it, then uh, the universe began 6,000 years ago. It began 6,000 years ago, and now it says that Yahweh the Father has always, was, and always will, and, 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 and uh, always always was, and always will be. Now that we uh, have no contention with. But we have a contention with the beginning of the creation of Yahweh. And that's what Genesis chapter 1 is talking about. Even while Elohim was proclaiming his law unto his people, Satan is plotting, he was plotting for the tempting them to sin. For this people whom the Elohim had chosen, he would wrench away in the very face of heaven by the leading them into the idolatry. He would destroy the efficacy of all worship. For how can man be elevated by the adoring what is no higher than himself and may be symbolized by his own handiwork? If the man uh, could uh, become so blinded unto the power, the majesty, and the glory of the infinite Elohim as to represent him by a graven image, or even by a beast or reptile, even they could uh, so forget their own divine relationship 
upon the image of their maker as to the bow down unto these revolting and senseless objects and their way was open for the uh, the the uh, the the foul, the foul F-O-U-L, foul license. Then the way was open for the foul license, for the evil passions of the heart would uh, be unrestrained and Satan would uh, have full sway. Okay, at the very foot of the Sinai, Satan began for the executing of his plans for the overthrow of the law of the Elam, thus carrying forward the same work that he had begun in heaven. During the 40 days while the Moses was in the mount with Elohim, Satan was busy exciting doubt, apostasy, and rebellion, while the Elohim was writing down uh, his law uh, to be committed unto his covenant people. For the Israelites denying their loyalty unto the Yahweh the Father and Yahshua his Son were demanding a gods of the gold. Oh, they wanted gods of the gold. But Nebuchadnezzar, was told by Daniel, and Daniel gave Nebuchadnezzar the interpretation of his dream, he says, huh, you saw this great image. You saw this great image, and uh, you know what? This image uh, had a head of gold, and then it had a uh, breastworks of silver. Then it had uh, the thigh works of brass. Then it had the leg works of iron. And the feet was of iron and clay. And he says, uh, your kingdom is only going to last for a while. And then they're going to have, uh, the second kingdom is going to rise inferior under thee, but he's going to subdue the kingdom of Babylon. And uh, he's represented by the silver. And so, he went on and on, and he said, and then, and then uh, Daniel told the Nebuchadnezzar, there's going to be a third kingdom arise, and that is of uh, the... Uh, Grecians, and uh, they're going to uh, uh, brass, and they're going to subdue uh, the, the kingdom of the silver. And then there's going to be a fourth one arise that's going to be represented by the iron, and that's going to be a nondescript government, pagan Rome, and it's going to rule the whole earth. Not just at the local situation here, but it's going to rule the whole earth. Nebuchadnezzar says, I don't like what I'm hearing. He says, no, my kingdom is going to last forever. I'll make an image all of gold. <laughs> okay. He said, so this image too, um, and who was that image of? It was an image of Nebuchadnezzar. It was an exact a replica. In this, I mean, a, 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 a piece of just a, a, a golden statue. And he said, uh, that actually looked just like Nebuchadnezzar. And uh, it was over 90 foot tall. And it was all of gold. Boy, there must have been a lot of gold in that land. Nebuchadnezzar had it. I guess he's stolen everybody's gold. Just like the Catholic Church today and the Federal Reserve, that uh, is their collection agency, or their, uh, yeah, their, 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 their thieving in industry that prints up monopoly money, paper money, and then they go in and, and they trade it in for all this wonderful gold that the world has, and they just hoard as much of it as they can. So here in Nebuchadnezzar, I guess he's hoarded all the gold in Babylon. Now he says, uh, I want to build this statue that's up to me out of all gold, meaning it's going to stand uh, the, the test of time, the ages of time. Now, yeah, gold will do that, all right. Gold will stand uh, throughout eternity. And here are these people down in Egypt, uh, huh, uh, defying their Lord and the Elohim were demanding gods of the gold. Demanding. When the Moses came from the awful presence of divine glory with the precepts of the law, which they had pledged themselves to obey, he found them in the open defiance of his commands, bowing in the adoration before a golden image. Uh, the leading Israel and uh, this daring insult and blasphemy of the, uh, to the Yahweh Elohim, Satan had planned to cause their ruin. Since they had provided themselves to be so utterly degraded, so lost unto all sense of the privileges and blessings that the Elohim had offered them, and unto their own uh, solemn and repeated pledges of the loyalty, the Yahweh would, uh, he believed, uh, divorce them from himself and devote 
them unto the destruction. Thus would be secured the extinction of the seed of Abraham, that seed of the promise that was to preserve the knowledge of the living Abraham. And do you know what? I represent the, that seed of Abraham that has been preserved. I can verify in my own life for the 75 years that I've lived upon this planet. I can verify that my life has been preserved. Uh, if it hadn't been for Yahweh uh, sealing me in and locking me in, I wouldn't be here talking to you today and reminding you of these wonderful scenes that Yahweh had laid down in the type and his wonderful creation of his promised uh, servants that he had promised a fourth time from the foundation of the world. Abraham, Isaac, and, and Jacob, and uh, David, and uh, God on down. <coughs> So it says, and, uh, though, and through whom he, uh, he was to come the true seed. Let's read that again. Thus, uh, okay, thus uh, would be secured uh, the ex extinction of the seed of Abraham, that the seed of the promise that was to preserve the knowledge of the living Elohim, and to, uh, through whom he, he was to come the true seed, that is Yahshua the Son, that was to conquer Satan, and he's the only one that could possibly do it. For the great rebel had planned to destroy Israel and thus thwart the purposes of the Elohim, but again he was defeated. Sinful as they were, the people of Israel were not destroyed, while those who stubbornly uh, ranged themselves on the side of Satan were cut off. The people humble and repentant were mercifully pardoned. The history of this sin was to stand as a perpetual testimony unto the guilt and punishment of the idolatry and the justice and long-suffering mercy of the Elohim. For the whole universe had been witness unto the sins of the Sinai and the working out of the two administrations. We have seen the contrast between the government of the Yahweh Elohim and that of the Satan. Again, the sinless inhabitants of the other worlds beheld the results of the Satan's apostasy and the kind of the government he would have established in the heaven had he been permitted to bear sweat. By the causing men for the violating of the second commandment. Uh, okay. Okay. For the Satan and to degrade their conception of the divine being by the sitting aside of the fourth, he would cause them to forget Elohim altogether. For the Elohim's claim unto the reverence and worship above the gods of the heathen is uh, based upon the fact that he is a creator and that he him. Uh, uh, that unto him all other things owe their existence. Thus it is presented in the Bible, says the prophet Jeremiah. For Yahweh is the true Elohim, he is a living Elohim and an everlasting king. For the gods that have not made the heavens and the earth, even they shall perish in the earth. And from under these heavens uh, he hath made the earth by his power, he hath established the world by his wisdom and has stretched out the heavens by his discretion. Every man is British in his knowledge. Every founder is confounded by the graven image, for his molten image is a falsehood, and there is no breath in them. They are vanity, and their work of errors. In the time of their visitation they shall perish, for the portion of Jacob is not like them, uh, for he is a form of all things. Jeremiah 10.10-12 10, to 12, and 14-16. For the Sabbath, as a moral, I'm talking about the Sabbath, I'm talking about the seven-day Sabbath, and that's the Sabbath that we're in to last this very moment. As a memorial of the Elohim's created power, points on him as a maker of the heavens and the earth, hence it is a constant witness uh, unto his existence and a reminder of his greatness, his wisdom, and his love. Had the Sabbath always been sacredly observed, there could never have been an atheist or an idolater, all right, or a uh, counterfeit believer of the religions that was created down in Egypt as a counterfeit to the religion of Joseph, that he had brought the knowledge of the, the, the truth down to, down to Egypt in his day. <laughs> For the Sabbath institution which originated in the Eden as, is as old as the world itself, for it was observed by all the patriarchs from the creation down during uh, the bondage in Egypt. For the Israelites were forced by their taskmasters to violate the Sabbath, and unto a great extent they lost 
the knowledge of its sacredness. When the law was proclaimed at the Sanya, the very words, the first words of the Fourth Commandment were, Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Showing that the Sabbath was not then instituted, we are pointed back for its origin at the creation. In the order uh, for the obliterating of the Elohim from the minds of men, Satan aimed to tear down this great memorial. If men could be led to forget their Creator, they uh, would no, make no efforts to resist the power of the evil, and Satan would be sure of his prey. Satan's uh, enmity against the Elohim's law had impelled him to war against every precept of the Decalogue. Unto the great principle of the love and loyalty of the Elohim, the Father of all, the principle of the Falao love and obedience is closely related. Contempt for the parental authority will soon lead to the contempt for the authority of the Elohim. Hence, the Satan's efforts to lessen the obligation of the fifth commandment among the uh, uh, heathen people. The principle enjoined in this precept was a uh, little heated. In the many nations, parents were abandoned or put to death as soon as age had rendered uh, them incapable of providing for themselves. Okay. In the family, the mother was treated with uh, little respect. And upon the death of her husband, she was required to submit to the authority of her elder son. Falal obedience was enjoined by the Moses, but as the Israelites departed from the, from the uh, Yahweh the Father and Yahshua the Son, the fifth commandment with others came to be disregarded. Satan was a murderer from the beginning, John 8:44. And as soon as he had obtained power over the human race, he not only prompted them to hate and slay one another, but the more boldly to defy the authority of the Elohim, he made the violation of the sixth commandment a part of their religion. By the perverted conception of the divine attributes, uh, he, uh, heathen nations were led to believe uh, human sacrifices necessary to secure the favor of their deities, and the most horrible cruelties have been perpetuated under the various forms of idolatry. Among these was the practice of the causing their children to pass through the fire before their idol. When one of them came through this ordeal and harm, the people believed that their offerings were accepted. The one thus delivered was regarded as specifically favored by the gods, was loaded with the benefits, and ever afterwards held in the high esteem, and however aggravated his crime, he was never punished. But should one be burned and the passing through the fire, his fate was sealed. It was believed that the anger of the, uh, the gods could be appeased only by the taking the life of the victim, and he was accordingly offered as a sacrifice. In the times of the great apostasy, these abominations prevail and to some extent among the Israelites. The violation of the seventh commandment also was early practiced in the name of the religion. For the most licentious and abominable rites were made a part of the heathen worship. For the gods themselves were represented as impure, and their worshippers gave uh, the rain unto the base of passions, unnatural uh, vices prevail, and the religion. And the religious festivity of festivals were characterized by the universal and open impurity. Polygamy, uh, polygamy was practiced at an early day. It was one of the sins that brought the wrath of the Elohim upon the Antediluvian world, yet after the flood it again became widespread. And I say it became a widespread so much that it touched even the uh, Apple of his Yahweh, Yahweh and Yahshua's eye, and that was his chosen servant, Abraham, two wives, brought a terrible, terrible uh, uh, responses, and brought terrible, terrible woes upon the world, even to our day, reached down to our day, his sin with Agar, taking that woman, that Egyptian woman, and bringing forth that Ishmael. What do we have today? The seed of Ishmael right now is spread out all over the world and trying to snuff out the life of all nations right now. Their commerce and their and the human life and everything else. For it was Satan's steady effort to prevent the marriage institution, to weaken its obligations and lessen its sacredness. 
for in no sure way could uh, he deface the image of the Elohim and the man and open the door unto the mystery and bash. Okay, now it says, from the opening of the great controversy, it has been Satan's purpose to misrepresent Elohim's character and to incite rebellion against his law, and this work appears to be crowned with, with the success. For the multitudes give ear unto Satan's deception and set themselves against the Elohim, but amid the working of the evil, Elohim's purposes move steadily forward uh, for their accomplishment and for uh, and for all that are created the intelligence he is making uh, man, uh, manifest his justice and benevolence. Through the Satan's temptations, the whole human race has become transgressors of the Yahweh's law. But by the sacrifice of his own uh, son, a way is open whereby they may return unto the Elohim. Through the grace of Yahshua, they may be enabled to render obedience unto the Father's law. Thus, in every age, from the midst of the apostasy and rebellion, Elohim gathers out a people that are true unto him, a people in whose heart is uh, his law. Isaiah 51 said it. Okay, now it said, It was by the deception that Satan seduced angels. Thus he uh, has in all ages carried forward uh, his work among men, and he will continue this policy until the very last. Should he openly profess to be warned against the Elohim and his law, men uh, would... Uh, uh, be aware, but he disguises himself and mixes a truth with the error. For the most dangerous falsehoods are those that are mingled with the truth. It is thus that errors are received that, uh, that captivate and uh, ruin the soul. By this means Satan carries the world with him. But a day is coming when his triumph will be forever ended. But the Elohim dealing with the rebellion will result in a fully unmasking the work that has so long uh, been carried on under the cover for the results of the Satan's rule and the fruits of the Satan inside the divine statutes will be laid open unto the view of all created intelligences. For the law of the Elohim will stand fully vindicated. It will be seen that all the dealings of the Elohim have been conducted with the reference unto the eternal good of his people and the good of all the worlds that he has created. Satan himself, in the presence of the witnessing universe, will confess the justice of the Elohim government and the righteousness of his law. But the time is not far distant when the Elohim will arise to vindicate his insult of authority. For the Yahshua, the Son, cometh out of his place. But where is his place at? This place is at the right hand side of the Father in the heavens and the great white throne until he comes uh, in his own throne and he's already done this he's already left the great white throne of the Father and it shows right there in Isaiah 6 the prophecy of Isaiah 6 he, uh, the judgment of the living when it began in 2002 at Kermit, Texas that's where he came to the threshold of the house for the Yahshua cometh out of his place to punish the inhabitants of the earth for their iniquity, Isaiah 26, 21. And who is the first one he punished? The angel of the seven candlestick of the lay of the seal, meaning he was the last prophet that was in charge of that candlestick, meaning true worship of the sanctuary, the ordained system of the true worship, restored uh, of the sanctuary that belonged to the Seventh-day Adventist Church. For the brother study Johnson, the angel of the seventh candlestick at the beginning, uh, in the eleventh hour, parabolic hour, restored the sanctuary system unto the Seventh-day Adventist Church and the Davidian Seventh-day Adventist, and they didn't recognize it, they didn't accept it, they rejected it, and then brother Johnson, because of his great disappointment not being able to get all Israel today, the spiritual Israel, the Advent, to, uh, uh, to accept uh, the sanctuary system restored on them. That was the first thing prophesied under the Seventh Day Adventist Church. That's the first thing that was prophesied. Uh, Ellen G. White, and that prophecy was brought by William Miller, the First Day Adventist, in 1833. So for 18, uh, for 10 years, he always sent a forerunner for the Adventists with a 2300-year prophecy, and that was a cleansing of the sanctuary, Daniel 8:14. The start of the judgment of the dead, Daniel uh, 7, 9, and 10. 
and to announce the third angel that was to join the two angels that William Miller brought and to introduce the sanctuary system, how it would come about to be restored uh, unto the advent. And you have to, it has to happen. This is the only place that the 144,000 can show up is if this sanctuary system has been restored, put back into full operation, which happened in 1970 with Brother W. Johnson, third feeding pastor. He was operating from Mount Gilead. He was operating from there. And uh, uh, out there in the wilderness, way in the far reaches of West Texas, out there in the desert, right out there in an exact replica of the deserts of, uh, of Sinai. Okay. So there he was, uh, resurrecting the sanctuary system, putting it in full operation. And I was there at the very beginning of it, 1970. I stayed through the whole duration for 33 years. And I witnessed the whole process of the, the restoring of that sanctuary step by step. It took seven full years from 1970 to 77 to complete the last piece of the puzzle. And that's when Yahweh uh, just, uh, revealed in the verse about the beginning of the solar year and the beginning of the eighth solar month and how he showed that the beginning of the, the new year, every year starts at the vernal equinox when night and day is equal to start the first season of uh, the year, which is spring, and then you have summer, then you have autumn, and then you have winter. You have four seasons completed, uh, 90 days to a season, three months, four seasons in a year. Yahweh, Yahweh showed Brother W. Johnson the secrets to all of that when they all had their beginning and ending. All right. So it says, but who may abide the day of his coming, and who shall stand when he appears? Uh, Malachi 3.2. Okay, so when Yahshua came out of his place to punish the inhabitants of the earth, he stood at the ancient men for the house, Ezekiel 9.6. He started with, uh, at the house of Yahweh, at 1 Peter 4.17, and that's when the judgment began. And the first uh, one that judgment fell on, the start of judgment living, and the close out the judgment dead was on the angel of the seventh candlestick of Laodicea, Brother brother Stephen Johnson, a term of Texas. And that axe fell on him off, uh, 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 September the 16th at the, uh, at the atonement of 2002. Okay, but who may abide uh, the day of his coming, and who shall stand when... Uh, he appears, Malachi 3 2. It's asking that question. But the people of Israel, because of their sinfulness, were forbidden the approach of the mountain when the Elohim was about to descend upon it to proclaim his law, lest they should be consumed by the burning glory of his presence. If such manifestations of his power marks the place chosen for the proclamation of the Elohim's law, how terrible must be his tribunal when he comes for the execution of these sacred statues? Well, he came in 1970, uh, and he gave it uh, this unto his servant, uh, the angel of the candlestick, Brother Johnson. He says uh, that's when he started executing those sacred statutes, because that's when they were restored unto the spiritual Israel today, the Seventh-day Adventist Church. And so he said, how will those who have trampled upon his authority endure uh, his glory in the great day of the final retribution? So who got to be judged first when the judgment of living started in 2002? The, the house of Gilead, where he first uh, had it set up to uh, restore the sanctuary. House of Gilead enjoyed, en en enjoyed for 33 long years the practice of the ordained system of true worship only in the letter only, not in the spirit, but they did in the letter, right to the exact letter of the law, but yet it availed them nothing because they did not understand how to apply the blood with it, and so not being able to do that, and not seeking how to find out how to do this, Brother Johnson didn't do it, and so therefore he never did. The whole church fell with him except three people, and the judgment came in 2002. How will those who have trampled upon his authority endure the glory and the great day of the final retribution? For the terrors of the Sinai were, represent, uh, were to represent unto the people the sins of the judgment, for the sign of a trumpet summoned Israel for the meeting with the Elohim, for the voice of the archangel and the trumpet of the Elohim shall summon from the whole earth 
both the living and the dead, unto the presence of their judge, the Father and the Son, attended by a multitude of the angels, okay, were present upon the mount. At the great judgment day, Yahshua will come in the glory of his Father with his angels, Matthew 16, 27. He shall then sit upon the throne of his glory, before him shall be gathered all nations, and that will be uh, Matthew 25, 31, and 32, there. When the Divine Presence is manifest upon the Sanya, the glory of the Yahweh, Yahshua, who is like the Divine Fire in the sight of all Israel. Verily, when the Yahshua shall come in the glory with his holy angels, the whole earth shall be ablaze with the terrible light of his presence. For Elohim shall come and shall not keep silence. A fire shall devour it for him, and it shall be very tempestuous round about him. He shall call unto the heavens from above and under the earth, that he may judge his people. Psalm 50, verse 3 and 4. For a fire stream shall issue and come forth from before him, which shall cause the elements to melt with a fervent heat. The earth also and the works that are therein shall be burned up. The, uh, the Yahshua, for the, for the uh, Savior Yahshua, shall be revealed from the heaven with his mighty angel. In the flaming fire taking vengeance on them that know not the Father, Yahweh Elohim, and that obey not the gospel, that is the teaching of the plan of salvation through the blood of the everlasting covenant of the Yahshua, Second Thessalonians, chapter 1, verse 7 and 8. Okay, it looks like that we have a ways to go to finish out this chapter. Uh, so, therefore, we're getting close to the end of our study this hour. We're going to start winding this down now with just about one minute's review. Uh, we, we, we're going to finish up this chapter 29 in, in our next study. And uh, so anyway, we're going to start it out and we're going to be on page uh, 340 of that Patriarchs and Prophets, chapter 29. So those of you that want to continue the, the rest of the study, just go ahead and read out that, that out. Patriarchs and Prophets, chapter 29, start with the, page uh, 340. And finish out that chapter because we'll finish that on our next study. Okay, this uh, brings the close. I study this hour. You can contact us at the 11th hour. Call on us, number 11th, to find our audio archives, hear this message, and more. We're going to close now with a song entitled Face to Face with Yahshua, my Savior. Face to Face with Yahshua, my Savior. Face to Face with The rapture I before him, Yahshua, who died for me. Face to face I shall behold him, all beyond the starry sky. Face to face in all his glory, I shall see. Yeah.